Here's 5 Excel skills every analyst should know to take you from an average Excel user to a super productive one. Best part is you learn them once and they pay off forever. So let's get into it. First up, we've got extracting web data. Let's suppose that we have a website like this one over here with this table that we would like to bring into Excel for further analysis. So you might think of writing it manually or just copying the entire table, but the problem is those are not going to keep a live connection. So if this changes, the Excel file is not going to update. So let me show you a better and faster alternative. For this, we just need to have an Excel file open, head over to data, and here we're going to click on from web. Here we're going to get this pop-up and we just want to put the URL of the website we want to import from. So we're just going to paste it in here and click on OK. Once you do that, you should get this pop-up with the navigator. And if we hover over table one and click on it, you'll notice that we actually have the same data as we did in the website. Now we can just click on load and we should get it all inside of Excel. Once the data loads up like this, we can edit it as much as we want, like deleting certain areas. The best part is if there's any updates on the website, maybe the pricing changes over here. What we can do is just go to table design and click on refresh. That's going to refresh all of the numbers in the table as it's a live connection. Next up, we've got data cleaning using Power Query. And suppose we've got this Excel file over here, which you can actually download for free in the video description. And with this, suppose we want to make a few changes like separating the name here from the retailer name and maybe removing the capital letters. For this, we can use Excel formulas, which is what the average Excel user would use. Like for example, using the text before function to get rid of all of the retailer names after the name, or even using equals lower function to get rid of the capital letters. There's nothing wrong with this method, except that it's a lot slower than using Power Query. So let's suppose that first we want to get rid of the retailer's name, so just have the contact person's name. We also want to find out in a new column the difference between the payment date and the order date. And finally, we want to create a new column over here to the side for revenue. For this, what we need to do is first select the whole table and just head over to data. From here, we're going to click on from table slash range. Once we do that, the Power Query editor should load up and we're going to select the contact column over here. And the first thing we'll do is head over to transform and we want to extract a certain part and that's going to be the text before a delimiter. More specifically for us, it's just going to be a space. If there's a space, we want to get rid of everything after. So I just put a space in there, click on OK, and you'll notice all the names are now nice and clean from Allen all the way to Stuart down below. That's one easy part done. And now let's go over here to the site for the payment date and the order date. We'll select these two and we want a new column for the difference between them. For that, we can go to add column and we're just going to go under the date and click on subtract days. That's the difference between these two dates. You can see how long it takes for each payment over here in this new column. Finally, if we wanted to multiply the price per unit by the unit sold to reach our revenue, we can just select these two columns and under standard, we're going to click on multiply. That's going to create a new revenue column. We can just rename it up over here and hit enter. It's really that simple. And now we can just go back to the homepage and click on close and load. As you can see here, that generates this entirely new table that's nice and clean for us. The nice thing about this method is that you don't need to know any of the formula syntax. It's quite intuitive inside Power Query. That brings us to our next step, which is alt key shortcuts. Most Excel users know some basic shortcuts like Ctrl C, Ctrl V, or even Ctrl X. But what's the shortcut if you want to format the header or if you want to freeze the first row? Well, let me show you all of those using alt keys. So here in the Excel file, we just need to press the alt key once. And you'll notice we get all of these numbers and buttons. These basically allow you to access any part of the ribbon. So for example, if I want to get rid of the grid lines, I can go to the view, which is the W, and type VG here. So Alt W VG, Alt W VG again to get rid of them again. Same thing goes with the first row. If you want it to stay when you scroll down, all you need to do is just press Alt W F R. That's the same thing as going under free panes and clicking on freeze top row. Now if we scroll down, you'll see that remains in there. Same thing goes if we wanted to fill all of these headers, so I'm just going to select them like so. 
and now it's gonna be in the home tab so it's gonna be alt h and then h again for the fill color here and i can use the arrow keys to go all the way down to the color that i want a lot of these alt key shortcuts may be a bit overwhelming for now but i definitely recommend you keep trying as once you memorize them it's gonna make you a lot faster than using your mouse Speaking of analyst tips, if you want to become a financial analyst, I recommend you check out our complete finance and valuation course. Here you'll learn all the essentials of accounting, finance, valuation, and financial modeling in Excel. In the course, first we'll cover financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we'll get into financial modeling through a three statement model on Apple. After that, we begin the valuation phase where you learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a precedent transactions valuation on Adobe to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present an investment thesis using a stock pitch format. So if you're interested in checking this out, head over to the link in the description below. Once we've done the data cleaning and the formatting, the next step is to analyze the data. And the best way to do that is probably with pivot tables. For this, we can just select the whole table over here, just click inside of it and go under insert and click on pivot table. Then we can just go to new worksheet, that's fine by us and click on OK. That's going to open up the pivot table field to the side and let's suppose that we want to find out what's the revenue by beverage brand. So we can tick on the beverage brands over here and we can scroll further down to see the revenue. Now you can see the revenue grouped by beverage brand. Right now it's not quite in order so we can always right click on it and go to sort. From here I can sort largest to smallest and we see that the sunny water seems to be the highest in revenue. We can easily change these metrics too like for example maybe we want to find out what's the average price per unit of each of these beverages. See which one's most expensive. So we can get rid of the sum of revenue part and just add the price per unit in there as the values. You can see it's showing the sum though. Instead, we want the average price per unit. So we can go to value field settings over here. And then we're just going to switch from sum to the average. Click on OK there. And you can see we have the average of price per unit. I can then sort that from largest to smallest. And it seems like the sunny water is the highest at almost 60 cents. If I wanted to see all of the rows that consist of the sunny water, we can actually double click inside and that opens up the details for average price per unit for this specific beverage brand. I can scroll down to see all of the details. And even better, what if we wanted to see this by date? Well, we can actually go under pivot table analyze and insert a timeline. We can choose the order date as our timeline and click on OK. You can see what that looks like here to the side. To get rid of the grid lines, again, it's Alt W V G. Now we can see that a lot better and we can scroll around this timeline. So maybe we only want to see that very last four months, even the last three months like so, and see how all of these figures change. I can then further see the breakdown instead of by month, by quarter. You can see we have all four quarters there. I can select the last two quarters and this title over here updates as well. Before we get into the bonus skill, in number five, we have the what if analysis, which allows us to forecast different scenarios. For this, we just need to head over to data and all the way to the right, click on what if analysis. You can see we've got three different options. I think the data table is probably the most powerful one. That's the one I'm going to demo over here. You can see that we have some financials and we've got the profitability down below. So this is all dynamic in that if I change the price per unit to let's say 2.9, you'll see how all of our figures are going to change in our profitability. So we just want to see if we change our quantity sold or our price per unit, how is the profit going to vary? And we can do that with the data table that we have right over here, ready to get set up. So first, the current values in the price side are 2.5 right here. I'm going to type that manually. Same thing on this side with the quantity sold, it's going to be 10,000. And suppose we want to see in increments of 500, so this figure here plus 500, same thing over here plus 500, and on this side it's going to be minus 500, same thing down below here. And on the price point, let's say that on this side we want to go up by 0 0.5, and on the other side we're just going to go down by 0 0.5. So let's try to set that up quickly over here. 
And the final step before we try this is to link the profit to this cell up top. So this one's going to be equals to our profit. Make sure this is linked and not typed in. Now we can select the whole table here. So control shift down, control shift right. Now we'll head to what if analysis, click on data table, and you'll see that we get this pop up over here. Within it, our row input cell is going to be the quantity sold and our column input cell is going to be the price per unit. We're ready to test this out. Click on OK. And you can see that right in the center, we have our current value. That makes sense as it has the same variables as we have in this table. But as we go up or we go down, you'll see how all of our numbers vary. Now that we have this full breakdown here, there's a few formatting things I would change. Firstly, for this figure right here, we can't quite delete it. If we do, our whole table disappears. So instead, what you want to do is change the color to a white. So we can do that with Alt H F C, and I'm just going to choose a white there. That's the same color as the background, so it looks like nothing is in there. Same thing with this middle part. Some people like to fill it in in another color. So I can do Alt H H and maybe just choose a light blue. And the very central one, Alt H H again, I'm going to go for a slightly darker blue like this. So it stands out a bit more. Finally, as a small bonus, you can actually automate a lot of these things we've just learned using macros. Let me show you how to do that. You first want to head over to the developer tab and click on record macro. Once you name it, all you want to do is click on OK and follow all the steps you want to automate. Once you're finished, you just want to press on stop recording and you should have the macro available on the side for you to use as many times as you want. If you couldn't find this developer tab that I've just shown up here in my Excel file, or if you just want to learn more about macros in general, I recommend you check out this video over here, or you take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.